we have looked at uh, MOSFET biasing. We have looked at small signal equivalence of MOSFETs. And we are in a stage where we can start to look at single stage MOSFET amplifiers. We will see how uh, different configurations of amplifiers gives rise to different figures of merit. We will look at how to analyze MOSFET amplifiers and how to calculate these figures of merit. Before we start looking at uh, amplifiers as such, let us look at what biasing strategy will be used for these amplifiers. Now you can use any one of the biasing strategies that we discussed in uh, a previous lecture. However, through this lecture, what we will do is we will look at the constant current source biasing for the amplifier. Now let's try to analyze this circuit, which is a MOSFET biased using a constant current source. So to start off, let's find out the, what the gate voltage is going to be. You would realize that the current flowing into the gate is zero because of which the drop across the resistance Rg is zero and therefore the gate voltage is going to be the same as the ground voltage which is zero volts. The next step would be to find the drain current. Why don't you wait for a moment and pause the video and find out what the drain current is going to be. In a MOSFET we know that uh, the drain current is the same as the source current and therefore the drain current is going to be equal to the current that is set up by the constant current source which is equal to I. Next, what would the drain voltage be? Why don't you try solving for it? The drain voltage is going to be the power supply voltage minus the drop across the resistance uh, connected to the drain, that is Rd. Therefore, the drain voltage is going to be Vdd minus Rd into Id. Having calculated all the other parameters, now let's think about what is the gate source voltage going to be? What is the voltage Vgs? Why don't you pause for a moment the video and try to calculate Vgs? Now we know that VGS is equal to the threshold voltage plus the overdrive voltage. Also, we know that there is a relationship between the drain current and the overdrive voltage. Till now we have been writing this equation. Um, we have been writing the drain current as a function of the overdrive voltage. Here is an expression which gives the overdrive voltage in terms of the drain current and therefore is the inverse of the relationship that we are already familiar with. And that gives us the overdrive voltage and hence the gate voltage. Uh, sorry, the gate source voltage. Now, as a practice, why don't you try looking at this problem where again a MOSFET is biased using a constant current source. The values of the resistors and the constants are given. You are asked to calculate the voltages at all nodes, the overdrive voltage, the small signal parameters, the values for the small signal parameters, draw the small signal equivalent of the circuit and also find out what is the maximum voltage swing on the drain. I strongly encourage you to pause the video now and to solve for all these values and then go ahead in the video. The values of voltages at different nodes is given on this slide. You can check whether you got the right answers the small signal equivalent and the values of the small signal parameters are in on this slide. I hope you got the right solutions. So now that we have looked at uh, the MOSFET with a constant current biasing, we can look at the con con common source amplifier. Now you can realize here that if you take off the circuit which is connected through the capacitor at the gate, the source and the drain, we have the circuit that we just solved 
and we know the DC currents and the DC voltages corresponding to that particular MOSFET. Those DC parameters now set up small signal parameters and what we are going to do is draw a small signal equivalent of the common source amplifier and try to look at what uh, figures of merit we need. So why don't you pause and try to draw a small signal equivalent of the common source amplifier. So the small signal equivalent of the circuit would be drawn by first replacing the MOSFET with a small signal equivalent of the MOSFET. Now this small signal equivalent replaces the MOSFET. We can see that there are three terminals, the gate, the source and the drain. And what we want to do is we want to figure out which circuit components are connected at the gate, what is connected at the drain and what is connected at the source. Let's start by looking at the source. Let's look at the source of our MOSFET circuit. We see that at the source there are two things connected. One is the constant current source. Another is ground through this capacitor. Now for the small signal equivalent circuit what we do is we switch off all the DC sources. And therefore the current source is switched off. Which means that we replace the current source with an open circuit. On the other hand, this capacitor can be replaced by a short circuit as in a small signal, the capacitor will act like a short circuit. And therefore, at the source, we have a ground. That is, the source is connected to the ground. Next, let's look at the gate. At the gate, what is connected is a gate resistance RG. Along with it, we have a capacitor through which a signal source and its equivalent resistance is also connected. Now we know that at in the small signal uh, approximation, the capacitor will act as a short circuit. And therefore, we can connect to the gate, the gate resistance and the signal source along with its equivalent resistance as shown in the figure. Shifting our attention to the drain, again we see that to the drain we have two branches connecting. We have the drain resistance which is connecting to the power supply and we have the capacitor connecting to the load resistance. Because we are drawing a small signal equivalent, the capacitor will act as a short circuit and therefore to the drain we will connect the load resistance to ground. We will also switch off all the DC sources, that is we will make our power supply equal to zero and therefore the drain resistance also connects to ground. And this is shown in the figure. Therefore we have a small signal equivalent of our common source amplifier here in the figure. Now what we want to do from the small signal equivalent is to calculate the voltage gain of this amplifier. We also want to look at what the input resistance is going to be and what the output resistance of the amplifier is going to be. So why don't you pause and solve for the voltage gain, the input resistance and the output resistance of the amplifier. In case you have a problem, you could switch back to your notes from when we discussed uh, the small signal equivalent circuits of PJTs and look how we calculated the voltage gain and the input and output resistance. So let's think about how we go about calculating the input resistances, input resistance and the voltage gain. First, uh, notice that the input current is the current that flows from the voltage source into the gate or into the amplifier which consists of the gate resistance and the gate of the MOSFET. Input voltage is the voltage across the amplifier, across the input of the amplifier, which is also the voltage across the resistance RG. The input resistance is the resistance of the circuit looking into the amplifier. It does not contain the resist equivalent resistance of the voltage source and the voltage source itself. Now the input voltage 
Now since the gate current is equal to 0, the resistors R sig and Rg actually form a voltage divider circuit, the input of which is the signal, the signal which is given from the signal source and the output of which is the input voltage. We can quite clearly see from the figure that the input resistance of the amplifier is nothing but the gate resistance because the resistance offered by the gate of the MOSFET is infinite. It can be seen clearly that the input voltage is the output of a voltage divider circuit comprising of the R sig and R G. The input of this voltage divider is the voltage of the signal source and therefore Vi can be written as um, in the expression on the screen. Now in usual amplifiers Rg is at least a few mega ohms while R sig is just a few ohms around 50 to 100 ohms and therefore Rg is much greater than R sig and therefore the input voltage is equal to the voltage of the signal source. Now also it is very easy to see that uh, the voltage between the gate and the source VGS is the same as the voltage across the resistance RG which is the input voltage. The dependent current source that we have at the drain here sets up a current GM into VGS. This current flows through a combination of resistances comprising of the load resistance RL, the drain resistance RD and the small signal resistance RO. Therefore the output voltage is a product of the current and the combination of these resistors. We have a negative sign to denote the direction of the current. The current flows from the ground towards the output and therefore we have a negative voltage. Voltage gain therefore is VO by VI which is also equal to VO by VGS and the expression is given on the screen. The overall voltage gain which is the output voltage by the output of the signal source is given by the voltage gain into the coefficient that we get because of the voltage division between the gate resistance and R sig. The expression is shown on the screen. Let's now try to calculate the output resistance of this amplifier. The output resistance is the resistance that we see when we look into the amplifier from the output. It is shown on the screen. The output resistance can easily be seen to be the parallel combination of the drain resistance RD and the resistance RO. The resistance offered by a constant current source is of course infinite. Having these values that we have already calculated, we can make some general comments about the common source amplifier. We can note that the input resistance of a common source amplifier is high. The gain that it has is also high. The output resistances that is afforded by a common source amplifier is also very high. We can have other amplifier configurations. For example, the common source amplifier can be modified and an amplifier can be made with a resistance in the source. I will leave you to evaluate the voltage gain and the input and output resistances of this amplifier and compare them with the common source amplifier. Another configuration that you could have is the common gate amplifier where the input is given to the source and the output is taken from the drain. In this case, the input resistances is very low while the gain is quite high. A common gate amplifier is very commonly used as a current buffer. A common gate amplifier also has a very good high frequency response. 
that is its performance does not degrade when we use signals of very high frequency and therefore it is used in high frequency circuits the common drain amplifier is an amplifier where we give the input to the gate of the amplifier and take the output from the source of the amplifier this amplifier has a very high input resistance a gain which is almost equal to 1 but a little less and a very low output resistance the common drain amplifier is also called a source follower and it is very commonly used as a voltage buffer i would strongly encourage you to look at to calculate the voltage gain and the input and output resistances for each of the amplifiers that i mentioned here we'll also do a few problems in class so that uh, this becomes clear to you see you in class